A pleasant good morning to everyone gathered here. I am Kirti Varshini of class 12A. I am Tarnik of the same class. We are here to present our project on the topic tissue culture. First of all, we would like to thank Arogyam sir for giving us this opportunity and our fellow classmates for supporting us. Now, let's move on to the driving question of our project. Why is micropropagation a better option than conventional way of cultivation? The conventional way of cultivation is nothing but cultivating plants in a traditional and natural way that is growing it in the soil. Moving on to the base of a project that is micropropagation. So what really is micropropagation? It is the process of taking plants from a living plant and using it to grow a new identical plant in laboratory conditions. Sometimes all you need is a single cell from a plant and you can grow a new identical plant from that one cell. The process of micropropagation is really simple. Starting from the collection of tissue from the mother plant, the selection of the mother plant plays a vital role as the cultivated plants are identical to it. Then these samples undergo proper sterilization and are transferred to nutrient medium. This nutrient medium contains necessary vitamins, hormones and other minerals for the development of shoots and roots. Then these plantlets are transferred to a soil and kept in a greenhouse condition under controlled conditions of temperature, humidity and light. Now, moving on to the next topic, how did micropropagation emerge? What made scientists to invent such technology? Plants like banana, orchids and cannabis find it difficult to reproduce. So manual help for these plants were required. So people started to come up with ideas for breeding of these plants. This brought the idea of asexual reproduction. Various techniques were developed in a short period of time, like vegetative propagation and artificial propagation. When the fields of biotechnology took a serious shape in the last decade, tissue culture and micropropagation came into practice. Now, let's get to the answer for our driving question. It is the best technique for the production of millions of clones in one year. When it comes to conventional techniques, it takes years to produce an equal number of plants. It facilitates the growth, storage and maintenance of a large number of plants in a small spaces, which makes it a cost-effective process. Large amounts of plants can be maintained in small spaces. This helps to save endangered species and the storage of germ plasm. Micropropagation allows us to cultivate plants with desirable characteristics. For some people, the goal is to simply reproduce the mother plant in order to grow multiple exact duplicates <coughs> of the same plant. And all of this can be done much more quickly than traditional propagation. Micropropagation can be used to obtain disease or pathogen-free plants. Meristem tip culture is used to achieve this goal. For example, virus-free potatoes can only be obtained by the micropropagation of plants. Micropropagated plants grow faster and more vigorously, yielding better results and without this method of reproduction, Undoubtedly, some plants which struggle to reproduce naturally will simply die out. Micropropagation is popular for the production of synthetic seeds that analog to true seeds. These seeds match with the morphology, physiology, and biochemistry of the zygotic embryos. It is the best technique to transfer different species of plants to different countries. This makes the international exchange processes easier and reduces the contamination during the transfer. On moving to the conclusion, we conclude with the opinion that micropropagation is much beneficial than conventional method. Developing countries like India can opt this technique in a large scale that would benefit crop production and improvement. If yields are better in quality and quantity, the price for the commodities would decrease and even the poor could afford it. This would eliminate starvation and malnutrition to a great extent. When India could satisfy its hunger, then export of green crops can be done to foreign countries, resulting in good foreign trade exchange. For example, Somalia being the poorest country in the world is untapped with abundant resources of natural gas, uranium, bauxite, iron, or gypsum oil, etc. India can export good grains and import or invest in mining in Somalia. This makes a noticeable improvement in the Indian economy. And that brings us to the end. We would like to thank you for your time and attention today. Thank you.